Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome to your F1 comments for the 2020 Hungarian Grand Prix, the third round of the 2020 Formula 1 season. A little bit later in the week than I wanted to, I had to record a very long Singapore Grand Prix on F1 2020, and you know that takes about five years to get through uh, in, in virtual terms, let alone in real life, so uh, I had to take a bit of a delayed day, but we're here now finally to read through your F1 comments, i.e. The, the name of the series, um, but to be fair, the Hungarian Grand Prix wasn't exactly scintillating, I think is, is the best way to not describe that Grand Prix, but there are plenty of comments to all go through and some funny moments in that GP that uh, will spark some conversation, I guess. If you're unfamiliar with the series, this is where I delve into the comment section of the official YouTube highlights of the races and see the best, the worst, and the funniest top comments there and have a little discussion about it. You might be able to see yourself if you were funny enough or got thumbs up enough. Now, obviously, like I said, it wasn't the best Grand Prix at Hungary let alone the year, let alone the kind of last few Grand Prix in memory. Obviously, we've only had two this year, but then there's a long gap till the next ones. But it wasn't the best one ever. Hamilton, in a world of his own, which in itself was quite, you know, awe-inspiring to see. Fair play. That Mercedes car is absolutely on rails. But Lewis this year seems to be finding these extra levels. You know, we saw qualifying at the steering Grand Prix. And then that race where he lapped up to, I think it was P5. Absolute dominating display from the reigning world champion but we've got a top comment here that really sums up where Mercedes are and where Ferrari are these days in 2020. Mercedes 1 and 3 disaster. Ferrari 6 and 11. It was a it was a good race. It was pretty decent. We only got lapped once so we can't complain. <laughs> Yeah, Ferrari, they, they, it wasn't a great race for the Scuderia, being lapped by the race leader Vettel. It was, it, the most telling thing was that Ferrari said it was obviously unacceptable, a bit of a disaster that they got lapped by the leader Vettel. He just doesn't care anymore. He just accepted the situation. He's just not, he's telling how it is because he just went, I expected it. I expected to be lapped. If you looked at all the data, I expected to be lapped. And to be fair, maybe that says a lot about the Ferrari engineers more so than Seb or the team. The fact that Seb was looking at the numbers and thinking, yeah, we're, we're definitely getting lapped here. And his engineers were like, no, that's unacceptable. We, we couldn't have seen this car. How has this happened? And that would also tell us a lot about when Vettel was switching over to the dry tyres. Yet again, he is the one making making his engineering calls. His engineer suggests one thing and he goes, no, no, we're doing this. And it appears to be the better strategy because his team wanted him to pit onto the soft tyres, i.e. the tyre that Leclerc went onto that just fell away. And Vettel went, no, let's put onto mediums because of graining. And then they went, yeah, you know what? We'll agree with that. So yet again, Vettel showing maybe what Ferrari going to miss in terms of good strategy for at least one side of the garage. It was a really great day for Haas. They made a bold call to go onto the dry tyres at the very start the Grand Prix on the formation lap, which we'll come back to in a sec, because that actually came back to bite them a little bit, but we've got a top comment here, 2.2k likes, so very much the underdog feeling is here, the good feel vibes for the underdog, clap, 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 let's give three cheers for Haas, getting in the points, and then this is where we come to edit, yes, even with the penalty, but still, one point is enough for Haas, and it really is, because last year they had a horrendous time, but yeah, they made a really awesome call, I mean, the rule, though, did screw them, there is a rule in Formula 1 where the team cannot tell you to pit under the formation lap. The formation lap is meant to be just the driver assessing the situation up to forming the grid. If he wants to come in, he can tell the team, I'm boxing in for drives, give me the dry tyres. That's fine, but if you ask, if the driver asks or the engineers tell you to come in, that's not allowed. So Kafiat even asked if, he, if they should come in and his engineers did not respond because they knew that if they did respond and something happened because of that, they would have been under scrutiny because of that rule. So the Haas team did both get penalties. Magnussen still ended up getting points. Um, not in, uh, the, the, as many points as he got because I think he went from P9 to P10. So two points to one. But it's still points. And I'm sure Magnussen will still want to kiss that engineer at the end of the race. Our next comment, I didn't really quite get the first time I read it and saw it. But it's basically a timestamp, 419, literally me at group homework. And if you go to the timestamp, I can't play the clip from the race highlights, of course. Otherwise, I will get no-scoped off YouTube by F1 Fast and Hamilton 
and can do a lap around the Austrian Grand Prix. But if you go through, I can show you the freeze frames. Essentially, there's a mechanic there who's the rear jack man to kind of, you know, lift the car up. And he's ready. He's ready to go. He looks ready. You know, he's all right. You can see through his visor there. He's he's good to go. He's going to do his job. The car comes in. And then his mate or his, coll his colleague basically comes in with a second rear jack. This man, I guess he's the backup one. But it really looks like he's about to get ready to do it. His mate just swoops in. He literally just stands there doing nothing. But yeah, that is literally at least one person in every group when you're doing group assignments or homework. Or especially for me in university, I remember one person doing absolutely nothing in our group coursework in year two of uni. He turned up on the first lecture to be assigned his group. Got our group. Cool. Fine. That's uh, nice to meet you. Then he just left and never was never seen and then came back and had the audacity to ask if he could put his name on the piece of paper at the front of a 10 page report no sir no sorry clearly just touched a nerve there i'm i'm, I'm definitely not salty about that still to this day just, just no. we've got some wizardry here maybe from crofty and the f1 directing team sebastian metal also taking to the pit show stroll pitting footage is this foreshadowing a future obviously we've got plenty of rumors going around sebastian metal might be going to racing point slash aston martin the debate whether stroll's gonna leave will perez leave sound off in the comments let me know what you guys think but that's going to be very tasty to see how that pans out. I, for one, am just here for all the drama, basically. Going back to that race, not exactly being electric. We've got another top comment. Podium finishes. That was a great race. Rest of the grid, there was a race, and we weren't in it. <laughs> that is actually... That is a great comment. That is a really great phrase. There was a race, but we weren't in it. Because literally, Hamilton was in his own race. And then you had P2 and P3. And then the rest were in like a junior category compared to those guys. And then especially Hamilton lapping everyone up to P5. That is a fan. I'm, gonna, I'm maybe going to quote that. I'm maybe going to steal that. I'm going to use that later in a tweet later on this season when Hamilton inevitably does this again. And we're going to move on to the Nicholas Latifi portion of the video. Because we've got two comments here. Obviously, he didn't have a great time. Uh, if you saw, and that's putting it lightly to be honest, uh, Nicholas Latifi the first man to ever be three laps behind the person in front of him and was still on the track it's it's not a great record Nicholas, to, to, to be honest, but uh, obviously it wasn't his fault, he had a puncher in the pit lane, uh, his team released him a little bit too early, into science I think it was, got a puncher and then span round and then ah, to quote him I think it was, from then on it was just downhill and we weren't in the race but fair play, he continued on Obviously, I'm, I'm assuming there was data to get for the team in terms of tyre wear, the aero numbers maybe, in terms of what the pace, what was what was that like, what the sensor's saying. Potentially, that's why they kept on running. But he did finish three laps behind the, the next person. And like, yeah, he was actually still just, just going. And, and, and so he was so far behind that this is why it's the perfect next comment. Rumour has it, it was Hamilton pouring the champagne whilst Latifi was still finishing his last lap, which... If he was quick enough, he could actually do, I, I reckon. Because, you know, one lap, you cross the finish line for Hamilton. One lap, and, ha and uh, Latifi is still two laps behind at that point. Because Hamilton parks in. And then two laps for a Williams car, if you think about it, is enough time for Lewis to undo all the straps, helmet off, weigh scale, and then go up to the podium and then start spraying if they just let him straight at it without the national anthem. So, uh, I, I, that's quite accurate, actually. It's not even a funny joke. I said the other guys in the race were in a different junior category. Well, we've got a comment just like that. Hamilton is eligible to be promoted to the next league. Formula Zero. The contestants are Hamilton and Hamilton's ghost. <laughs> Hamilton's just going to rock up to Silverstone for the next Grand Prix. He's just doing time trial the entire weekend. Everyone else is doing Grand Prix mode, like on the F1 game. They're doing Grand Prix mode. They're doing their career mode season. Hamilton's just there in time trial. No damage, no issues with his car. Can never fail, never runs out of fuel. Practically no tire wear, even though he complains about it on the team radio. He's just there doing time trial laps, trying to improve his personal best lap time. This race, before he even got started, though, to be fair, did have some excitement. Verstappen crashed on the parade lap onto the grid, uh, and his suspension was, like, dented and kind of bent in. And his team on the grid fixed his suspension. Now, that is the feat of engineering in Formula 1. That is how it is the pinnacle, you know, in terms of those guys got it turned around, and I think it was 20 seconds till they were meant to go off on the formation lap that they got it ready, uh, and it was Max hit the barrier, engineer, hold my Red Bull. That is very, very fitting there. Red Bull engine, there was a great photo of all the engineers right round. It was kind of bird's eye view. 
That, that's what F1's all about sometimes in terms of the engineering prowess of these guys. Now, we mentioned before how maybe 1-3 for Mercedes might be a disaster. Bottas unable to get Verstappen for P2 and he loses ground in the championship to Lewis Hamilton. And in the middle of those race highlights, Crofty went zero. Uh, this is, if you want to uh, listen to it for yourself, it's 0 58. But Valtteri Bottas has had a stinker. Now, that is the most British phrase ever. And also calls the question, who's, uh, who's Crofty been watching as of late on YouTube? Continuing the bottom. Bottas bashing. I'm sorry for any uh, Bottas fans out there. I'm sure you and your friend can, you know, just take the, take the hit. Bottas is the anti-Rosberg, and races like today show it perfectly. It's a harsh comment. It's a harsh comment, but it's also a little bit true. Like, I've really never, ever felt like Bottas will actually ever challenge Lewis. That, it's unfortunately just the vibe that I've always got and will always get until... I don't know, we see Bottas 10.0 with like a massive beard, a mohawk, or, you know, I don't know, shaved his eyebrows. Or I, at this point, no Bottas is going to be enough to beat Hamilton. Hamilton... 1.0 is good enough. And it's on that rather serious and somber note that I'm going to end this one's your F1 comments. And that's a message to the other drivers. Step up, please, Red Bull. Please, do, do, do not feel pity for Ferrari, okay? Next race, I don't want any pity for Ferrari. Turn up and attack the Mercedes cars, please, okay? Because that was not that great to watch, okay? There were a fair few times where I many laps went by and I didn't even look up from my phone because that that's how, you know, uninspiring that Grand Prix was at times. There were obviously instances with some night battles. Honourable mention actually for F1, Lando Norris versus Charles Leclerc. They did this fantastic edit where they edited the Twitch kind of cameras and from their streams they edited that and the commentary they're doing, battling each other in game in the virtual GP over the top of the real life battle they had. Absolutely that is the content that I want F1 from now on. That is the kind of content I want but that has been your F1 comment. Obviously when it's a Grand Prix like that it's hard to have a lot of amazing comments there but still some great funny ones and if you did enjoy it then be be sure to hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're new around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. Till the next one, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. I've been Arifa. Goodbye.